face of Jerry Quarry, the number one ranked challenger, who is, of course, tonight going to be fighting perhaps the toughest fight of Jerry's career. Age-wise, Quarry will come in tonight 25 years of age, and that is spotting three years to Muhammad Ali. Jerry, of course, hails from Bellflower, California, comes from a fighting family. His father and his brother, of course, Mike Corey is a fine young light heavyweight at the current time. Those of you folks who are watching this telecast on a color screen can see that Jerry, typical of the Irish, is decked out in a very resplendent, brilliant green robe. Corey has had two opportunities at the heavyweight title. Earlier, when he lost to Jimmy Ellis in 15 rounds in 1968, and of course, when he lost to Joe Frazier. So this represents the opportunity that Jerry has been waiting for. They say he's a changed young man since he's decided to really go into fighting and to train and train hard. Well, he certainly had better be trained and in fine condition because tonight he will be in against a gentleman who is regarded as perhaps one of the fastest heavyweights ever to come in the ring, both afoot and with his hands. However, there is one thing you have to say about this young man from California. He does not fear Cassius Clay. He does not fear him. And that is usually what makes for a good fight, however long it may last. We've talked about Corey's punching ability. There is no question, because as those of you fight fans who will well recall, he took out young Mac Foster in a very exciting fight, and that perhaps might have been the turning point in Quarry's boxing career. Now on the far side, coming in, of course, the crowd yelling, screaming, mixed boos. Here he comes, the first time, again, stepping in as a heavyweight, in an important fight since his last title defense. Three and a half years ago, Muhammad Ali coming up with his handlers here, wearing a white robe. And I don't believe that anybody in this entire group is happier than this young man to once again have the opportunity to step into the ring. Boxing is his trade. Boxing is his fame. All right, we're just about ready for our official ceremonies, and here is the famed ring announcer from New York, Johnny Addy. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present three former great champions. We'll start with... Mr. Harry Pets, Jesse Hill Jr., and myself, and on behalf of Robert Castle of Sports Action Inc. of New York. Thank you, Senator Johnson, and let me take a moment to welcome our audience around the world to this. gentlemen, here are the ring officials, the attending physicians, Dr. Brown, Dr. Siegel, Dr. Wilbur, Dr. Ellison, the timekeeper, and also the timekeeper for the knockdowns, Ernie Snow. The judges are editor of Boxing Illustrated, Lou Eskin, and the former Contender for welterweight championship honors, Billy Graham. The referee, ladies and gentlemen, Tony Perez. Main event, 15 rounds. Introducing from Bellflower, California. He's wearing blue trunks. He weighs 197 and a half. Jerry Quarry. <laughs> From Louisville, Kentucky, he's wearing white trunks. He weighs 213 and a half. Return of the champion, Muhammad Ali. Main event, 15 rounds. 
Tony. Mohammed Jerry Quarry. I'm here to enforce the rules of the commission. Now, you score a knockdown. You must go to the farthest neutral corner and stay there until I tell you to come out. All right? Three knockdowns is out. Now, listen. The farthest will be saved by the bank. And that listen. Wait a minute. Are you, are you uh, will we keep the crowd down, please? The referee, it's very important, wants to give them the instructions. Just listen to me. If you score a knockdown, you must go to the farthest neutral corner and stay there until I tell you to come out. If you, if you, the fire is on the floor and the bell rings, the bell will not save anybody from being knocked out. The count must continue. The second, please stay out. Three knockdowns. Three knockdowns is out. Three knockdowns is out. All right? Any questions? Shake hands and good luck to both of you. to go. Clay in the white trunks, Corey in the blue. Fifteen rounds. start, you have to say one thing that Muhammad Ali or Cassius Clay, whichever you want it, has certainly appeared in the first round to have lost none of his swift. He is still plenty fast and his left jab is still a dynamite punch. Jerry Corey has a slight redness below both eyes and on the bridge of his nose from that left jab. Clay has missed a couple of big punches in that first round so his timing might be a shade off. But there is also no question that the former heavyweight champion is in fine physical condition. He has done a lot of road work and he obviously is ready to go. Both fighters are up. The staring contest that took place prior to the start of the fight apparently had no effect on Jerry Quarry, but it might be that Clay's left hand will before too long. Quarry 
Murray leaping forward to connect with that hook, his left hook, his best punch. Left and right by play on the combination. his best punch. He so far in the first two rounds has effectively not only used his superior footwork but his right arm to block that punch coming in and the reach of Corey is at a very definite disadvantage at the moment. Bill, uh, it looks as though Mohammed is having quite a comeback and he appears to be in excellent shape. Well, his jab is certainly sharp. Uh, he's moving well, but once again, Tom, I just feel that uh, we're all witnessing a first, something that uh, none of us can really say how this is going to come about because of the time. Three and a half years, he's just 28 years old, and uh, it's quite an experience. Well, we'll certainly find out. So far, he has looked in fine condition. Terry Corey in the blue trunks trying to work to the inside and of course play having the superior speed has effectively so far stayed out of range of that left hook Jerry said in his pre-fight strategy he was going to try to get inside to cut him off so far he has not been able to do that Oh, 
has been open. You see the timer, 15 seconds. upset about it. Got the kind of holding back. Cut. The doctors, there were four in attendance tonight. Dr. Calvin Brown, Dr. James Ellison, Dr. Joel Wilbur, and Dr. Jerome Siegel. They said one of each doctor would be working in the corner. The question now is which one made the decision? Referee Tony Perez stopped it. Apparently, Corey not able to answer the bell for the third round. punch the left hook. I assume that you worked on this a bit. Yes, I have a couple of sparring partners with a good left hook. They fight a lot like Quarry. And a friend of mine out in Los Angeles, Ron Rich, told me about him and sent him to me. And that was a great help to me. I'd also like to say I'm glad that I am back so we can settle this confusion about Joe Frazier and all the people who think he's still the champion. And I hope something can soon be worked out where we can solve this whole heavyweight mess. Now tell me how you felt yourself. Did you feel tonight that you were as sharp? I noticed in the first round that you missed a couple of punches. You're not expected to hit everyone, but did right. you feel your timing was sharp? My timing was sharp. Jerry Quar is tricky. He's a good boxer. I managed to miss just a few punches. He didn't hit me but about once or twice, never to the body, not in the face. And uh, But he was good. He was tricky. And I think my timing, I'm a little stronger now than I was the day I retired. And, I think I'm better, a much better fighter now. Did you did you feel the uh, situation of the left jab was the one that started it all? Was the jab that started the cut? I'm not sure. I would have to probably watch a replay or something. It probably was the right hand. I don't know. I well, was so uh, we're there. looking at it right here, champ. Let's see if we can turn it back and perhaps get some kind of an idea of the punch that started the cut. There was no question that the combinations that you were throwing opened it very deeply, and it was a bad cut. Yes, I'm sorry that it did end that way because Quarry wasn't yet out. I think he was dazed, but he wasn't out. And uh, I'm just sorry that he couldn't have went on. Well, now here is the replay, so you'll have an opportunity to watch it. This is the entire round, champ, so you go ahead and describe whatever you're trying to do here. Well, right now, I'm just here, concentrating whatever. on my legs. This is a big asset to me. On my toes, in and out. And uh, usually when a fellow punch at him, I'm out of hitting range and I can uh, counter. But he was real tricky. He was taking his time. He had a hard left hook, but I uh, blocked that one pretty good. Did you feel that uh, there was any particular punch of his that stung you at any time? One body punch at the end of, I think, the second round, he caught me in the rope with a body punch, and that was pretty powerful. 
but I've been also training for that too. But uh, I like to say it was a good fight, and Quarry was tricky, but I think I was just a little too fast. If the three-year layoff had hurt me, I think he would have did much better. I gathered from your fine conditioning, as well as your fast footwork, as well as your timing and your punches, that you were trained to go 15 if you had to. I could have did this a 15. Right now, I'm working slow. I was ready to step it up if I had to, but my battle plan was just to keep a step ahead of Quarry in case I needed more energy for the later rounds. When you spotted the cut from whatever punch it was, and I assumed that it was from that punishing left jab which you were firing in there like a piston, did you work on the cut? Well, no, I was just boxing and hitting the target wherever it came, but I wasn't specifically uh, concentrating on the cut. But I'm sorry again that the cut did happen because uh, I really didn't get enough action. Uh, just three rounds really wasn't enough. But I think we can now uh, solve this whole trouble with Joe Frazier myself because this is the number one contender and I think he fought a seven, eight hard rounds with Frazier, hit Frazier about 900 times. I think he hit me about twice. So, Champ, uh, do you feel that uh, you want Frazier right now or would you like to have another fight between? Well, it's up to the managers and the backers. we got a couple more things in the working. We're not too anxious to get to him. He's got to get past Bobby Foster, the light heavyweight champion, first. I know that you said that as far as you were concerned, there was an awfully good right hand, and I think that was the one that did the real damage. Right. You were mentioning the fact that Frazier, in your book, is not the champion, that nobody ever took your title from you in the well, ring. I think you can watch me fighting Jerry Quarry here and look at how long he went with Frazier before he cut him and how uh, many times he hit Frazier. And if you compare me with uh, Frazier, uh, this is a completely different fight. There was also a quote in the paper to the effect that Frazier wasn't much interested in this fight. You don't really believe that, do you? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think he's surprised that I got my license back and he was relying on me not getting him. This is why he was talking so big, but now that I'm back in action, I think he's backing off. Now, here we are, champ, and this is a slowed-up action of it. I don't know if you can even follow your own punches, but believe me, they're awfully swift. But that left hand is obviously very punishing, and it was all during the fight. Yeah. So, box a man like Quarry to beat him without uh, getting hit yourself, you have to be pretty good on your toes, and I'm lucky that um, the amount of footwork that I've been doing enabled me to get in and out like I did without getting hit myself. I think that we are going to watch the combination of the left. There's yeah. the left and right, and I right. think that was the punch right. that really did the big damage. I think that was it. Well, there was no doubt that you came back tonight, young man, and I know that the boxing fans all over the country send their congratulations to you for a very fine job against a very tough opponent. No Thank question you. about it. You went out as a champion. You came back as a champion. Like My also, congratulations. I'd like to say hello to uh, uh, the Supremes, the Temptations, Sidney Pote, Bill Cosby. All of my friends are here in the audience today. And Gail young, Sayers also and Gail in Chicago. Sayers is a young fellow right. that wanted to be remembered to you. And yes. congratulations again. Thank you very much. We'll look forward to seeing you. And that just about wraps it up, ladies and gentlemen. We will see if we can get a hold of the referee, if Tony Perez is still in the ring. Oh, Tony has put on a jacket, and I didn't have an opportunity to see him. The referee from New York, Tony Perez. Tony, tell us about it. Well, it looks like it was a very deep cut and long, and I didn't have no shirt to stop it because he could uh, have serious consequences on that. Very bad cut, and uh, Muhammad Ali looked very sharp and faster than ever. I could say that. We noticed the circumstance here of the... Left hand seemed to be the damaging punch, the constant blow that seemed to start the cut, and then it looked as though a combination of left-right combination that really busted it open. That is correct. Two more jab, 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 left hook and cross, right cross. Tony, tell me this now, in terms of the cut, from where we were seated ringside, it didn't look as though the cut was damaging to the eye. I mean by that there was no blood in the eye. It didn't look like there was any real damage in that respect. You stopped the fight simply because you didn't want it to go any further that way. Well, let me tell you, the manager, Teddy Banton, his trainer, he didn't want him to go. And, and Jerry got pretty upset about it. He wanted to continue. But he finally, uh, he said that he wasn't going to continue because my, then I stopped it. Because I can't take the manager's word for it. I have to listen to the fighter. When the fighter told me, then I stopped it. But the cut was really bad and the blow was flowing into the eye. 
Now, when you call the doctor up, could you move just a little bit, Skipper? That a boy. Uh, when you call the doctor up, Tony, uh, what was the doctor? What did he say? The what was doctor, his comment? I never spoke to the doctor. The doctor never came in. I called I him. I didn't for see never, anybody come in. Never, That's what I wonder. The doctor never had a chance to come in, and I make my decision by myself. The referee made the decision. There was no doctor in there. That is correct. Now, Tony, we have a tape here, a rerun of the fight, and as we have recalled here from ringside the circumstance, this is the round all the way through. Now, again, as you have noted, the left hand, and I think the very definite combination of punches is easily recognized as the damaging blow. That is correct. Two more jab, jab and jab on the top of the eye, and if you watch it, after the middle of the run, I keep washing that eye because it was, I saw it, it was a real bad cut. And it was bleeding, and uh, like I said, at the end of the round, the blow was flowing right into the eye. Again, Clay utilizing the jab. Corey trying to get in the left hook, but Clay cannot, of course, uh, risk that, and he was fighting a great defensive fight at this manner. And in other words, Corey had very few opportunities to use his favorite punch. Clay kept him off balance with the jab, and then if you watch very closely, you'll see the combination of the jab, jab, and the right cross. That is correct. That is correct. Keep too much jab, keep him off balance all night. And he managed, uh, Jerry never had, Jerry Quarry never had a chance to get set. Never. He never gave, never gave him a chance. Tony, you weren't in there long enough to really have any trouble with the fighters. Uh, there wasn't any arguments or anything, were there? Well, at the beginning in destruction, they didn't want to listen to me, so I had to stop everything. They were talking to each other. They don't want to listen to me. Looked like they were arguing. I had to stop everything between me and the announcer, uh, Johnny Addy. We had to stop the action and tell him, are you going to listen to me? Because they were mad. Really split the eye. You can see Quarry's eye. And there's another right, all adding to the cut which undoubtedly, as referee Tony Perez, right here at my shoulder, said it was too much. Did not call the doctor into the ring, said that is the end of it, and that was it. Wait a minute. Uh, I did call the doctor in, but he never had a chance to come in because there were so much people in the corner trying to get in. He never had a chance, so I never spoke to the doctor. I tried to call him in, but he never came in. But it was your decision, Tony. Oh, yes, sir. Now, Definitely. officially in the time, Johnny Addy, uh, did we get the cards on that part of it? Yes. Uh, according to the New York rule, Tommy, it's the end of the third round because the bell did not ring for the fourth round. So York, we call it a TKO at the end of the third round, and I announced it that way. Johnny, thank you very much. Tony, again, a fine job. Wish it had gone a little longer, but that's the way it is in boxing. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. And that just about wraps it up, ladies and gentlemen. The